Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ambassador Crocker, uh, it is so good to see you, even if it is just on the screen. And I thank you so much for the great work you have done on behalf of our country. Uh, these SIVs are of tremendous concern. I have a family uh, that we're working with there in Tennessee. The interpreter is out. Uh, parents are ready to come out. The frustration with a younger sibling not being out um, or able to get out, knowing that the Taliban is going to kill every single one of these individuals if the administration and the State Department cannot get their act together on this, knowing that these people are in danger, knowing that they are depending on us, very frustrated with the embassy in Afghanistan. Uh, it is closed because of COVID. Uh, they should be working remotely. And Mr. Ambassador, I will tell you, I completely agree with you that we are going to have to get these individuals, send them to a safe third country to get them out of harm's way, and then, um, go ahead and complete this processing, but we cannot leave these individuals to die. And we know that they will, every single one, be slaughtered. So uh, your insights into this region are so vitally important. I, I just wondered, as you were answering Senator Cornyn's question, how many Afghani nationals are potentially in this program? How many F2As are children? And are there any statutory limits that you feel like would hamper or hinder us moving forward and getting these individuals out of the country? Thank you, Senator. Um, the, in terms of numbers, we have about uh, 18,000 individuals um, in, the, uh, in the backlog. And if you conservatively estimate that uh, uh, each individual would have three others, say a, a spouse and two kids, and that is a conservative e e uh, estimate, you're talking about over 70,000 people. Uh, so we've got, um, we've got a huge number and that presents uh, an enormous security and logistical challenge if we have to turn to evacuation. And frankly, I, I don't see any other alternative right now to evacuation. So uh, let me just come back to you on that. So actually to fulfill our promise and our obligation to these individuals that have risked their life to help us and to keep our men and women in uniform safe, we have about 70,000 that need to be moved out before the Taliban, the, and we hear the Taliban is right now very aggressive in how they're moving into uh, these areas in Afghanistan. So it is 70,000 people that you feel like we need to move to that safe third country so that they can go through the processing and that you are recommending that we do this by evacuation. I don't see any other alternative to an evacuation. I'm not even sure though that an evacuation is an alternative for the reasons I've, I've just tried to state. Uh, I do think there is a necessity that is beyond urgent uh, to have that um, assessment, that conversation starting right now um, and it will, you know, the State Department doesn't have the resources for this. It would have to be a, a, effectively a military operation. Um, the military is in no way ready to execute that operation. Uh, the White House has got it, in my view, take charge of, uh, uh, of this contingency. It's their policy. We're all leaving. Uh, got that. Uh, so what do we do about, in this case, our interpreters? Well, I will yield my time back to the chairman, but uh, Mr. Ambassador, as I said, um, your insights are so important. Uh, when I was in the House, we, I really appreciated uh, on my trips over 
the time that you would spend uh, with us and having your insights into the application of U.S. policy in this region. So I thank you for, very much for this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.